Hello there. In this video, we're going to be talking about the best material for project prototyping, for prototyping your projects, as well as the three main questions you need to ask that will help you define the best material for your specific projects. Because every project needs uh, a kind of different material to prototype with. And these questions will help you define what material is the best for your project, as, as well as uh, the overall best material in general. So getting straight forward with this, I think that cardboard is the best material to prototype with, but it might not be the best for you or your specific project. So keep that in mind. Uh, cardboard is really amazing and it checks these questions that we're about to ask, but let me know in the comments below or in the live chat, where are you watching from? Where are you watching from? Uh, just comment that in, that'd be awesome. And just to be clear, here we are talking about the typical like at home maker. We're not uh, specific, I'm not specifically angling towards like a business or somebody trying to manufacture a full on production line. Uh, if you're at home and just wanna create some cool looking stuff, uh, what you need to prototype with, uh, that's what we're gonna be talking about in this video. So the first question, the first question is, is your prototyping material accessible? Is your prototyping material accessible? This means that you can make stuff with it with little to no cost. So there are sub questions broken into each of these main questions. So as we go through these main questions, there are uh, lower categories to help you define more specifically what material is the best. So can you use this material with very low cost? So like I said, I use cardboard all the time and I can use this for virtually no expense because uh, I just drag it out of the recyclables. We order stuff from Amazon all the time, comes in these boxes, you can just recycle that. And this is just a first draft, so it doesn't need to be super pretty. But also you want to think about what will you need to manipulate them? It's, um, but yeah, you need to make sure you're thinking about that because you might need nails, glue, tape, thread, a welder, uh, depending upon what you're prototyping with. And uh, this the the material you're using could be anything from paper to a CNC machine uh, milling out aluminum. But you want to make sure that you the products that you're using to manipulate the material are cheap and accessible as well so that you are not stuck with uh, having to have it be really expensive every time you want to make something because if there is a like monetary barrier between you and starting a project then you're not going to be as creative and you're going to kind of play it on the safe side which will keep you from getting to those super awesome ideas and now the next question the next question we'll get to that in just a second but if you are just meeting if you're just joining us. My name is Eli Tennant, and this is Maker Brain. And my mission is to help you access and implement your creativity with DIY projects so that you can have fun and be successful using your giftings and doing what you love. So if you want to see videos like this, live streams, and other videos that come out every other week, then subscribe right now. Plus smash the like button if you're getting value. So that next question, question number two, Question number two is, is your prototyping material appropriate? So is it appropriate? So this isn't like, is it mature or whatever? It's, can it hold up to the task that you need it to accomplish? Can it hold up to the task that you need it to accomplish? So obviously you don't want to use uh, paper on something that needs to be really durable and you don't want to uh, use have to mill out like stainless steel uh, for something that you could just make with cardboard. So we're talking about what materials are best for prototyping. Hello there, Sandy. And uh, re remember, it's just a first draft. So your your material is just a first draft. So that's really all you need to worry about. It doesn't need to be super professional looking. It doesn't need to uh, be crispy and clean. It doesn't need to look awesome. It just needs to get the idea across as you're prototyping this. And then later you can level it up and paint it and do whatever you need to do to make it look super awesome, super awesome. Awesome. So this might seem obvious that you need the material to be uh, durable and hold up to the task, but it can be 
easily overlooked. Now, the next question is, is your prototyping material easy to use? So the material you want to create your projects with, create those first drafts, is it easy to use? So it might mean that you have experience with it. So I use cardboard. I have the most experience with cardboard. I also have a 3D printer. I also have a 3D printer. And this is kind of a balance between the previous question, is it appropriate because sometimes the more appropriate materials say my 3d printed plastic you can't see it my 3d printer is right up there uh the 3d printed plastic it might be more suitable it might be a better material to prototype with but it actually uh might not be as easy to use i am okay at 3d printing but i am not very proficient at it i can't uh rapidly create stuff like something like this takes me like a minute to make versus modeling and designing and then messing up. I mess up so much on the 3D printer. So it might seem like a great idea at one point, but then it gets too difficult. So how proficient are you with the material? Because that is a big factor in determining how easy it is to use. Obviously, some materials are easier to use than others uh, due to the things that uh, they require. So sometimes it requires skills and a skill set to manipulate that like the 3d printer but um cardboard and paper that's why those are such awesome prototyping materials as well as like foam board because they uh, are easy to use for just about anyone and then lastly how long will it take for this material to become useful that's another problem with 3d printing and other machining processes is because they take a long time to uh, they take they take a while to get into a physical form. So if you have the time to be in person working on something, it takes much less time to model something with a cheap little thing you can use with your hands rather than maybe clay that takes forever to dry. You want to be able to rapidly pound this out and get your ideas into a fleshed out form so you can later refine them, use those more, more cool looking stuff, get it to look nicer, and then that is where you can really start leveling up once you get that prototype down and then maybe i'd move to the 3d printer once i have the idea nailed down right here now what is our next question well this is the last question that was number three and now just review what do we need in a prototyping material what do we need in a prototyping material uh yes andy a 3d print pen is pretty good for prototyping versus like a 3d printer because uh, you can use your hands and quickly get the out into uh the real world so that's pretty awesome and so but remember it needs to be accessible it needs to be appropriate and it needs to be easy to use easy to use right there but then so like i said cardboard is my favorite and that's just a picture it's it can be like whatever uh it can just be junk and then you can just glue it all together and then that is how you get to your uh your finished model but if you got value out of this video then maybe you'd consider watching another video by maker brand you can clear tap the screen right there as well as a video on the number one tool that makers need for creating functional ideas so click or tap the screen right there and i will see you in the next video god bless